Yeah. All right, Coach, congratulations on a great season and uh, making the playoffs again. Outstanding job in the playoffs. Are your players excited? Are they ready to get going here or what? Well, yeah, thank you, first of all. And, yeah, they are excited. I mean, this is uh, – you have to earn your way into the playoffs. And you know, we have a young group. Um, you know, to finish tied for second uh, in our division um, with, with uh, the age of the group and how important the roles a lot of those young guys play, uh, it's, it's a good effort by the guys. So we're proud of them. Uh, but now it starts. Now it starts over. A lot of work. To, a lot of work ahead. We got, we got a lot of young guys from all over the world, um, getting a lot of really valuable experience. Um, what's it been like? You guys have gone through a lot of adversity. Yeah, I think that uh, the last 25 or 30 games have been very rewarding for our coaching staff. Um, you know, we were saying it to the team uh, and to the media for the 10 or 15 games before we started to start winning a lot, that we really felt uh, that we were coming. We felt like we were playing the right way and our habits were starting to kick in. Uh, the first, you know, half of the season or so was was at times frustrating. Uh, but it was also expected, you know, knowing how many of our forwards were going to be rookies and uh, go-to guys as teenagers. Um, we knew there was going to be a lot of ups and downs. Now, what we didn't know is we were going to not have Riley Sheehan all year. Um, what you didn't know is you're going to lose Malone and Byro for good chunks of the year and, and Pekka Lukanen for most of the year, right? So I think that, that gives uh, more credit to the guys for, for staying together through those things. Um, and we've become difficult to play against in our own way. Um, and that's, that's been a real credit to the guys buying into playing the right way away from the puck, which is probably the hardest thing to teach the young guys. Can you elaborate on that point to just be harder to play against a different way? I guess so that fits into your identity as a team. Yeah, so as a team, as an organization, right? We want to be fast. We want to be an attacking, aggressive, uh, puck moving team. Uh, without the puck, we want to be smothering. Uh, we did definitely don't want to be an organization with Buffalo or us in Rochester, we don't want to sit back. We want to be attacking. Um, so we want to be smothering at, at our best without the puck. We're not the most physical team. We're not built that way, but we're smothering. We, we take time and space away with our gapping, with our back checking, with our tracking, uh, and with our forwards getting pieces of people as they get back above. And, and the more committed we've become to that, uh, the better our defensive numbers became, but also the better our offensive numbers become. And that, that's a hard thing for young forwards to understand, that the better defense you play in pro hockey, the more offense you're going to get. Um, but, but eventually, over time, we kept beating it into the heads. And, um, and, and the last, like I said, the last 25, 30 games have been real good. And, and I think the, you know, the 10-game point streak, I think we gave up 18 goals only, right? And, and uh, if you're giving up two goals or less, you're going to give yourself a real good chance to win most nights. And we've been doing that, not always, not perfect, uh, but relatively consistently over the last 25 or 30 games. What stands out as the depth of the score? You know, what are nine, 10 guys with 14, 15 goals? What stands out to you? Because it's not the so-called star power, I guess. It's just a little score. Yeah, I, I think that's the unique part, uh, the, the collectiveness. But that also fits into what we preach and how we want to live every day uh, and the great captains and leaders that we have. Um, so I think there's a real collectiveness to this group, uh, which has allowed us to overcome a lot of that adversity and a lot of those, uh, a lot of guys being gone, a lot of star power, not necessarily being there. Um, you know, some of that is intentional as well, like last year, um, you know, we're not going to oversign, um, guys to block our prospects. Um, you know, the, the part of, a part of development is is habits and accountability and, and practicing the right way. But part of development is also opportunity. Um, and so um, we aren't built to have a guy with 80 or 90 points that that is out there first in the power play all the time. And then and then therefore maybe Rusek and Rosane and Kulik and Weisbach and those guys don't get those those moments. So. Um, I think because of that and because of what we value when we go sign free agents, there's a real collectiveness to this group uh, that we're seeing on the score sheet, but, but we feel it and see it in the locker room every day. Two straight years now with a lot of young guys in the roster and to see them grow through the season and become major impact players by the end. Uh, yeah, it's been very rewarding as a coaching staff. It's something we take a lot of pride in collectively here um, as a staff. Uh, the time we spend with the prospects, uh, how we practice, what we're on them about, how much time we spend with them as people so we, so we can develop the relationships necessary 
uh, to have the hard conversations with them. Um, you know, we're very proud of what, you know, Quinn, Krebs, Paterka, Sammy, uh, Upi, um, you know, Fitzy before you, you got claimed that waivers, what those guys were doing up in Buffalo. So we're very proud of that. Uh, we're very proud of uh, the, the youngsters this year, um, not just the rookies, you know. So we had the five rookie forwards uh, who have all at times been, been excellent. And, and certainly Roseanne and Kulik have, have been phenomenal in the second half of the season, especially for the age they are. Uh, but, but Kozak has been, been a real force for us in the last 20, 30 games. Uh, Cedarquist, we saw what he, what, how important he was this past weekend. Um, and Kisikoff has had some big moments down the stretch too, where every game matters. You, you, you know, we missed the play-in series by a point or two. Um, well, Kisikoff had a, had a game-winning goal in a shootout recently and, and a huge goal against Utica to seal that game away. Without that, um, we might be playing tomorrow night. So uh, all those things are important. But then, but then also the drivers of this team are young. Um, Byro, Weisbach, Rusek, you know, um, Murray, they're, they're four of the biggest drivers of our team up front. They're all still young prospects. Um, so that's been rewarding to see those guys elevate their game as now being counted on to be go-to guys and drivers for us, not just secondary players. What areas of Rosane's game have you seen really trend in the right direction? Are you looking forward to how he uses this playoff experience to, to take that next step like we saw, especially with, with Paterka last spring? Yeah, um, and, and there's going to be failure and success in this playoff experience, um, but but both will be great learning moments. Um, and what he's really done uh, is Isak is starting to embrace in the last 25 or 30 games, uh, getting using his skill and his speed to get to the interior of the ice. Um, and, and as you guys know, that, that's where goals need to be scored uh, and on goalies of this caliber, but also goals need to be scored there at this time of the year. You're not scoring on the perimeter very often in the playoffs. And so his willingness and ability to get to the inside um, has just grown exponentially with the puck. And then without the puck, his commitment to playing the right ways, you know, back checking, stopping on pucks, winning puck battles. There's still times he's going to get pushed off, but he's just not strong enough yet. That's okay. But it's not, now it's not because of lack of commitment or want to do it. Uh, sometimes it's just a strength issue, which that's easily correctable. The strength issue is easily correctable. Um, the will and the wants and the, and the commitment to do it are things you need to change first. And he's changed those things in spades. Compared to Philip's development to that point, the slow, steady march, just how has he grown this season throughout these six months? And then I guess what happened over the well, I think that, uh, Philip, um, you know, it has been a slow steady march. Uh, it, it, you know, when you look at developments and, and, you know, you talk Quinn Paterka and those guys, you know, you think it's this. It's never that. It's never that. It, it's, it's a little nudge forward and then dip and then try to nudge back forward and then sometimes a fall. You know, and, and if you looked at the line of developments on a day-to-day, week-to-week path, it'd be all over the place. But you want the trend month to month to be heading in the right direction, even though that week or that game or that day of practice might not be good. Um, and his trend month to month has been heading in the right direction. Some games better than others. Um, he holds himself to a very high standard with his work ethic and his competitiveness. And, you know, some of it is also opportunity. Um, he's, he's playing on a line where he's, he's in some more of those positions offensively right now. Uh, he played with Malone and Weisbach this past weekend, and it was they were excellent together. Uh, and you can see what I love about Moose is that um, he's he has the skill to score skill goals, um, but more and more throughout the season, he's embracing getting to the inside and getting to the front of the net because that's where he's going to have to make his money. He's going to have to score goals like Michael Murch does and Brett Murray does um, on a consistent basis if he wants to play in the National Hockey League. And, and that was great to see uh, the hard nose goals, the net front nose goals, uh, the goals around the dirty areas, because those are the ones that really matter. The role of not just leading this team as becoming a playoff team, being a team to be dealt with in the playoffs, but also as guys that have to help these younger guys hold on and become pros as they as they join this team. Yeah, Mersh Malone and Prow are captains, but but I, I'd also throw in there, you know, guys like you know Larry Pilot, uh, Matt Parkowski, guys like that that are older guys that we don't have a lot of older guys, but but uh, are, are 
of critical importance to us winning, but also to the development of our of our prospects. Um, first of all, they're they're great humans. And, and that's something that uh, Kevin Adams and Jason Carmanos and myself talk about all the time in the off season. Who are the men that we're trying to surround our prospects with? And we want culture drivers more than skill. And culture drivers are guys that are their habits and their professionalism and their work ethic on a daily basis is high level NHL. Maybe it's just genetics or something else that's held them back from being at that all the time. And that's what we have in, in those guys. Um, and so when Yuri Kulik or Isak Rosan or any of the other youngsters, um, when they look up at the leadership in, in our locker room, uh, they see guys that have relentless work ethics that are totally team first driven guys that are in the shooting room, that are on the ice late and early and put in an extraordinary amount of extra work on top of practice. Um, and so it's just easy for them just to fall into that. Uh, because that that's the culture and people talk culture and, and I can pray talk culture and say we want to do this all this but if my leaders don't live that culture what I say means nothing um, and those guys live it every day and it makes my job a lot easier I think that we will have some reinforcements uh, from the injury uh, the group um, uh, I would say that Byro and Warren are likely out um for for this week um i think kulik and kozak i would say are probably trending towards probable um they've had some real good days the last few days uh in the rehab work um so i think there's a pretty good chance that we could see kozak and kulik over the weekend which would be huge kulik's lower body uh kozak's upper body uh byro's lower body uh warren's lower body and, and Warren's, a, 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 you know, he doesn't get as much notoriety, but uh, the guys in the room know how important he's been to our group this year. Uh, he sets our, he sets our physicality, sets our pace. Uh, he really plays to the identity that we want to play with as a group. He's had, he's had a tremendously, uh, tremendous season that's probably been under the radar a little bit. That's what Philip, the coach he has that he empowers his mind games. I guess through size, through I think that that's, um, you know, probably more what veterans do for young guys uh -huh. um, than the other way around. And, and but what when when Cedarquist is is playing at the top of his game, his line is playing downhill on their opponents. And, and so that can empower your line mates to uh, to play uh, that way. And it's easier to play that way. Right. So. Um, and what I mean by playing downhill is, is Moose at his best is, is really physical. He wins puck battles. He gets on top of the opponents. And so most of the night his lines playing in the right direction and he's skilled, but it's, he's also simple with the puck in a good way. Um, there's not a lot of turnovers when he's, when he's playing his best. And so when a line over the course of 15 to 18 shifts, five on five, 75% of your shifts are going downhill on the opponent playing in the offensive zone. Uh, that could be very powerful. Um, and at his best, that's, that's what he helps his lines do. Patrick. Patrick. Yeah. Uh, just, uh, Seth, uh, you know, with young players, you know, sometimes they don't know what they don't know. And, you know, as you've gone on here in Rochester, how have you tried to, you know, impart upon them, what it, what it's going to take to succeed at this level and, and beyond up to the NHL? Do, do you mean uh, succeed at overall or, do you, or succeed in the playoffs? Uh, really overall and in the playoffs as well. Okay. Um, so overall, we just try to get our guys bought in on habits. Um, and and I'm, I'm a huge believer that habits define who you are as a person, but certainly who you are as a hockey player. And um, – We've been fortunate, you know, I have a pretty strong background in development. So I have a lot of examples I can help point to with guys I've worked at with at USA, um, guys that were here last year and the Quins and Paterkas and Krebs and Samuelsons and um, that, that doing these things is gonna pay off and here's why. And, and you really have to, you're selling them on it, right? Because they've, especially the offensive players, they've created a, a really good young career for themselves and they've gotten drafted very high 
more often than not based on their talent and their athleticism and their skill. And now you're trying to get them to see why it's important to have defensive habits and the win puck battles. And so um, you, you need to sell them on what it's going to do for them, what it's going to do for them offensively, but what it's going to do for their career. Uh, Rusek is a great example of that. You know, we, we met earlier in the year and we just laid out the Sabres first and second lines, you know, and, and whose job are you going to go take? You know, are you going to go steal Tage Thompson's job or Jeff Skinner? You know, although it, it, and, and fortunately, a, kid, a guy like him got to play with Quinn and Paterka last year. He saw how good those guys are. So if you're not going to go steal a job in the top six, you have to do the other things. And that gets your foot in the door in the NHL. And then you get, if you do that well enough and you earn trust, you get to also show that, yes, I have skill and intelligence on top of it. So um, we try to get the guys, the, the young players to understand that uh, it's not going to be their skill more often than not. There, there are exceptions uh, that is going to get them there and keep them there and help them be successful there. It, it's their play away from the puck and their habits. Uh, we've had a really good group. Our scouting, our scouts have done a fabulous job of not only drafting talent, but of drafting really good people. Um, and, and because of that, you're allowed to create relationships with them. And then the relationships allow you to be hard on them when necessary. And, uh, you know, However long the playoffs go, whether you're playing in June or, or what have you, what do you want your players to take away from this experience um, into the offseason and beyond? Yeah, the learning lessons uh, in this league are invaluable. And then in the playoffs, they just get magnified, right? And so um, I want them to take away, number one, how fun it is to play at this time of the year. Um, because there's dog days in, in January and February in this league and in the NHL. And if you don't push yourself through those dog days, you don't get the reward of playing right now. Um, so you want them to cherish how fun it is and how big the moments are and what the crowds feel like and, and, and then double down on their work uh, to earn more of those moments going forward. Um, the other thing, whether they succeed or fail individually is to learn from it. Um, JJ Paterka had a phenomenal playoffs last year. Uh, and I think he learned and gained a lot of belief in himself through that experience. And, and Jack struggled at times in the playoffs last year, but he also learned. And what Jack Quinn did in the playoffs last year is he found ways to help us win and have a successful playoff run without scoring. And I think that's helped him be successful in the NHL this year, because as a rookie in the NHL, you're not going to go score 80 points most of the time. And he found ways to help impact the Sabres with without scoring all the time uh so there's just lessons that are invaluable to take away from this just last thing for me uh you know with syracuse and and ben there obviously your two teams that know each other your two coaches that know each other how do you try to approach a series there where you know there really are no secrets or edges to be found you know by what you don't know about each other yeah we've played 12 times i mean yeah. uh, it was like utica last year uh Funny is like we're six and six and we're not, you know, we're six, three, two and one or whatever. And so they are against us, you know, but, but when you compile the overtime losses in, it's six and six and the goals for and goals against are identical. Um, so it, it, I have a tremendous amount of respect uh, for Benoit. Uh, he's a phenomenal coach. He's won in this league at a, a long time. Um, his teams are, are hard to play against. Uh, they're structured. Um, they're disciplined. Um, so, we know what we're facing uh, and we know then they also have some high-end talent like Barboulé and, and Myers and players of that caliber. So uh, we have a stiff test in terms of our preparation. You know, we're going to prepare more thoroughly than a regular season game, but, but not in a way that feels abnormal to our players. I think mistakes I've made over my coaching career um, have been when you go out of the norm uh, too much and the players feel like, oh, it's, it's, we're doing different things or we're preparing differently or it's, this is bigger. Um, we just want to be the same version. Um, we want to be the best version that we've, uh, of ourselves. And the best way to be ourselves is to treat this as similarly with a little more preparation uh, as we do our, uh, how we go through the regular season.